Good evening everybody and welcome to our shear tonight. I want to also especially dedicate this shear L'schus, uh, my wife Esther Avigail Basrachel Sara and our daughter that was born today, Zion Adir B'Sha Tevo Mutzlachas Hoidu Hashem Ki Tev Kili Elam Chazdai so every morning in davening, before we begin Shachris, we say Abaya Hava Mesader Seder Hamaracha Mishmadi Gemara Valiba Da Abashol. Abaya used to organize the Seder Hamaracha, the order of the service in the Beis Hamikdash, in the name of tradition, and according to the opinion of Abashol. This statement, Abayam, Abaya have a Mesader, which we say in the morning before Izel Mekoyman, before we actually begin davening, comes from the Gemara, Mesechti Yume, Daflamet Gimel. What is the meaning of these words, and what is the meaning of the words Abaya used to organize? The system of the service in the Beis Hamikdash, Alibed Abashol, according to Abashol, what does this mean? What it means is that in Mesechti Yume, in the Gemara Yume Daf Yedalad and Daf Tesvav, the Gemara quotes an argument between the sage Abba Shol and the Chachamim and the other rabbis. The question was, what did they do in the Beis Hamikdash after cleaning out the first five lamps in the Menorah before they cleaned out the last two lamps in the Menorah? Let us explain. In this week's parsha, at the end of parsha's Tetzava, the Torah says, of Aaron Salmon. The Koyan used to offer a special offering each morning and each evening called Ktoiris, the offering of incense in which special spices were burnt. On the altar, the Mizbeach Apnimi, the internal altar, and the combination between the hot coals and the psalmim and the spices, the incense created a tremendous, delightful fragrance and aroma in the Beis Hamikdash every morning and every evening. This was called the Avoida of Ktoiris, burning the incense which happened on top of the altar inside of the Beis Hamikdash, the Mizbeach Apnimi. So the Pasuk says, the Hikturel of Aaron Ktoiris, Samim, Aaron, the priest, should. Burn on the inner altar Ktoiris, an offering, a burning of salmon, of spices, of incense. Baboiker, Baboiker, every morning, every morning, while he's cleaning the lamps of the menorah, that is when he should burn the incense on the altar. Our sages say that from the redundancy, Baboiker, Baboiker. In the morning, morning, while he's cleaning up the lamps, we learn from this that the cleaning of the lamps must be divided into two parts. Baboiker, baboiker. As though there were two mornings, two sections to the morning. Baboiker, baboiker, you don't clean the lamps in one shot, you clean the lamps in two separate shots. So it's baboiker, one part of the morning, baboiker, another part of the morning, which means that while the Koyin used to clean out the menorah, the candelabra which was kindled each night, and in the morning he would clean out the menorah from the ashes, from the wick, from the residue of the oil, the remaining oil, to prepare it for the next kindling, that did not occur in one shot, it occurred in two separate shots. Hatova saneris, heitivaya saneris, happened in two sections in the morning, babayke, babayke. First, he would clean the first five lamps of the menorah, the first five lamps of the candelabra, and then he would interrupt this service with another service and resume cleaning the last two lamps of the menorah. But what did he do in the middle? So there's an argument between Abba Shol and the Chacham. According to Abba Shol, what he used to do in the middle was, he would slaughter the Tamid offering. Each morning and each evening they offered a lamb known as the carbon tamid, the daily offering, he would slaughter the lamb of the carbon tamid and sprinkle its blood on the Mizbeach on the altar. 
according to the sages, the Chachamim, what the Kayin, what they used to do between cleaning the five lamps and the two lamps, they used to burn the Ketairis. They used to burn the incense on the internal altar. Abba Shaul proves his perspective from the Pasig Beitivai Es Haneris Yaktirena. Beitivai Es Haneris, when he cleans the lamps, Yaktirena, then he should burn the incense. So he says, first finish cleaning the lamps, and then Yaktirena, only after that do you do the Ketairis. So what do you do in the middle of cleaning of the lamps? You do something else. You slaughter the lamb of the carbon tamid and you sprinkle its blood on the altar. The Chachamim in Mesech Tegyum Adaf Tesvav say no. Be'itiva Yesaneris Ektirena means during Hatavah Saneris. In the midst of cleaning the lamps. Be'idon Hatavah while you're cleaning the lamps. In the middle you should perform the service of the Ketirah. So they cleaned five lamps. They took a break and the Kayin burned the incense on the altar and then they resumed cleaning the last two lamps of the Menor. Now we'll understand what we say each morning in the beginning of davening. Abaya have a mesad the seder amarach mishmei de gemara. The great sage Abaya used to organize the structure in the Beis Hamikdash on a daily basis. Mishmei de gemara in the name of tradition va'aliba da abashol. But his perspective followed the perspective of Abba Shol, not of the Chacham. Because if you look in Abaya's structure, which we say every morning. He has like this, Dishun Mizbeach Apnimi, cleaning out the inner altar. Kaidem la Tavas Chamesh Neiris, proceeds cleaning the five lamps. Hatavas Chamesh Neiris, Kaidem as Ladam Hatamit. Cleaning of the five lamps precedes the blood of the carbon tamid, which is slaughtering and sprinkling the blood of the lamp. Dam Hatamit, Kaidem la Tavas Shtey Neiris. The blood of the Tamid precedes cleaning the last two lamps. And the cleaning of the last two lamps precedes Ketairis. Whose opinion is this? This is Abba Shaul's opinion. Because according to the Chachamim, it's not Dama Tamid Kaidim La Tavas Beis Neiris, Va Tavas Beis Neiris Kaidemis Lektairis. That's not the case. On the contrary, Hatavas Chamish Neiris Kaidemis Lektairis. Ketairis precedes the two last lamps and follows the five lamps. So Abayus structure is Aliba da Abashol. It's according to Abashol, and this is what we say each morning in our own davening. Now if you take a look in the Rambam, if you take a look in the Rambam in Mishnah Torah in Hilchis Tmidinu Musaf and Peirut Vav Allah Gimel, the Rambam paskins like the Chachamim. He follows the opinion of the Chachamim as a verdict for a very good reason. We know the principle in halacha usually is yachid verabim halacha kirabim when there's an argument between a single individual versus the majority of opinions, we follow the majority. Hence the Rambam follows the majority of opinions, the Chachamim who disagreed with Abba Shaul, and therefore the Rambam says that after the cleaning of the five lamps they would do the Ketairis and following that Metiv Shtei they would clean the last two lamps. Also the Smag, the Sefer Mitzvah's the smag as well, in Essen, Kuf Tzadik Beis, follows like the Rambam, the verdict, the hal- the he gives as the verdict, the perspective of the Chachamim, that Ketoris interrupted the cleaning of the lamps. Comes the Beis Yosef, Maron HaMechabi, Rabbi Yosef Karo, in his commentary on Tur and Shulchan Aruch, Eirachayim Simen Memches, the Beis Yosef asks a tremendous question, the Rambam follows the opinion of the Rabbanon, of the Chachamim, and that is his verdict. Not Abishol. He says that Ketoris interrupts the cleaning of the five lamps and the cleaning of the two lamps. V'chei niridas hasmag, the Beis Yosef says. And the smag, the great halachic authority, also agrees with the Rambam. If so, why don't we follow the halacha that was given by the Rambam and by the smag? Which, who embraced the opinion of the Chachamim and not the opinion of Abishol. The Bish Yosef says we should say every morning, Dam HaTamit Koydem La Tavas Chamesh Neiris. HaTavas Chamesh Neiris Koydem La Tavas Chamesh Koydem La Tavas Chamesh This is the Bish Yosef's question. The Bish Yosef gives an answer and I quote, Meyachar Shematsu Oilam. 
Mashma the Svirale the Hachi Hilchasa, the Lachain Loy Ratsu Lishana is Hasederahu. The Beis Yosef says this since the world, the Jewish world, discovered that Abaya organized the structure according to the opinion of Abba Shol, this indicates that Abaya believes that the Allah is like Abba Shol, not like the Chacham. That's why he used to discuss the structure of the Aved according to Abba Shol. So they didn't want to change that structure of Abaya since he believed Allah is like Abba Shol. Yet here we are confronted with a big question. Apparently the answer of the Beis Yosef begs for understanding. The Rambam and the Smag didn't know about Abaya. They also knew that Abaya believed that the Allah was like Abba Shol. They also learned the Gemara and Mesech the Yuma. Daf Lamed Gimel, Abaya Ava Mesad, and Seder Amarachim, which made the Gemara, Alibe da Abba Shol. They knew Abaya's opinion, and yet... They felt that the halacha is not like Abba Shol, the halacha is like Chachamim. And the reason is, because Yachid v'Rabim halacha k'Rabim, we follow the majority opinion. So what type of novelty, what type of chiddush is the Beis Yosef telling us that Matsu Oilam, the world discovered that Abaya held like Abba Shol, and therefore they didn't want to change that order, and therefore we follow the system of Abba Shol every day. What do you mean the world found out that Abaya believes like Abba Shol? The Rambam and the Smag did not know that. But yet Allah Lamaisa is not like Abaya. Allah Lamaisa is like the Chachamim, although it's not Abaya's opinion. So why would we change the Allah that the Rambam and the Smag embraced? The Allah like Chachamim and revert back to the individual opinion of Abaya and Abba Shol? Now Rashi in Masech Yuma explains the words, Abaya have a Masada say that I'm Arachim Ishmei the Gemara in the name of tradition. Rashi says, what does it mean in the name of tradition? So Rashi says that all the Talmidim in the Beis HaMedrash agreed with this tradition. So this gives us a perspective that Abaya wasn't an individual. Mishmei de Gemara, this was the consensus. But then the question is, how did the Rambam and the Smag have the right to disagree and say that Allah is like the Chachamim? So the answer is because the Chachamim are the majority, not Abba Shol. So the question is, why was the consensus Mishmei de Gemara like Abba Shol, not like the Chachamim? But there's another question, and perhaps even a greater question. If you open up a Mahzer to Yom Kippur, in the Seder Avoida of Yom Kippur, what we say in the Musaf of Yom Kippur, we read, Lefanim yikanes lahetiv chamesh neiris, o lahaktik teiris habayker, o lahetiv istei aneiris hanisharis. The Kayan would walk into the, the Kayan Gada would walk into the Heichel to clean out the five lamps, to burn the incense of the morning, and then to clean out the other two lamps. In other words, every single Yom Kippur, the Jewish people are embracing the opinion of the Chachamim, not like Abba Shol. They're saying that the Ketoris happen in the middle of cleaning out the lamps. So what is going on? All year we follow one structure. Suddenly Yom Kippur, everything is different. Memanavshach. Abba Shol's opinion was for the whole year. Yom Kippur and every other day. Chachamim's opinion was for the whole year. Yom Kippur and every other day. What's the logic? That 364 days a year we're quoting Abba Shol, Abba Yavim, Misad, Seder, Amarach, Mishmei, the Gemara, Ali, Bad Abba Shol. And once a year on Yom Kippur, suddenly we decided today the system is like the Chachamim. What's even more problematic, on Yom Kippur itself, in the morning of Yom Kippur, before you start davening, you're quoting Abba Shol. Later in Musaf and Avoid, you're quoting the Allah of the Chachamim. If we follow Abba Shol, why suddenly Yom Kippur are we changing? If we don't want to follow Abba Shol, why don't we change it every day? Let's give the Seder Amarach according to the Chachamim, not according to Abba Shol. <laughs> this evening I want to share with you, our dear listeners and dear friends, a beer, an explanation that I was zeichet to hear from the Rebbe. At the Fabrengen of Shabbos, Parshas Tetzavah, Tov Shin Nun Beis. That's Parshas Tetzavah, 1992. It was actually the second to the last, the third to the last Shabbos Fabrengen. After that was Shabbos Kisisa and then Shabbos Vayakel, following which the Rebbe took ill. On Chavzayin Adir, Aleph, Tavshin, and Beis. So this was the third to the last Fabrengen, and in the first Sikh of the Fabrengen, the Rebbe addressed the Shita, the opinion of Abba Shol. 
And I want to take one akuda, one point the Rebbe made and elaborate it a little bit, elaborate on it a bit, according to my understanding. But by prefacing the idea that's well known for any student of Kabbalah, for any student of Chassidus, that every single halacha and every single mitzvah and each law and Torah, just as it has a literal physical interpretation, can also be explained on a homiletical, metaphysical and spiritual level. In other words, each halacha and mitzvah can be appreciated from many dimensions, from a very concrete, literal dimension, and also from a metaphysical perspective, where it's actually symbolic of a particular idea concerning the human psyche, concerning the human soul, and our challenges in life in order to fulfill our mission for which our soul has descended to this world. The same is true concerning our discussion. The argument between Abishol and the Chachamim is not only a technical argument about the order of the day in the Mishkan or in the Beis Hamikdash, what came first, what came when. It's also a spiritual argument representing two paths in the relationship between the Jew and Hashem, in the work of the Jew to create his own or her own Beis Hamikdash, to create our own sanctuary in which Rishachanti B'Seichim, in which the Rebbeinu Shalom is going to dwell. In order to understand the spiritual significance of this argument between Abba Shaul and the Chachamim, we must introduce the Klayakar, a famous Klayakar at the end of Parshas Tetzavah. The source of the Klayakar is actually from Medrash. Medrash Tachshay Pedikir Aleph, but the Klayakar elaborates and he says, why were the two altars in the Mishkan, why were the two altars in the Beis HaMikdush? If you're following these portions, you know in Parshas Truma, we discussed one altar, and in Parshas Tetzavah another altar. There was the outer altar, the Mizbeach HaChitzayin, made of copper, upon which they would offer all of the animal and grain sacrifices. Inside the Mishkan and inside the Beis Hamikdash, in a chamber known as the Hechel, there was another altar. This altar was built of gold, Mizbeach HaZav, Mizbeach HaPnimi, it was inside. On it they would not offer any animal sacrifices or any grain sacrifices. There would be no wine libations or water libations. Rather, this altar was used almost exclusively for Ketiris. This is where they would burn the incense each morning and each evening. This is where they would take the various spices and place them on the coals, on the flames, in the, on this altar from which I smoke spreading an extraordinary uh, fragrance and odor pervaded the tabernacle and the sanctuary as mentioned above. This was the purpose of the internal Mizbeach, the golden altar. So the Klayakar says that the two altars represent the human body and the human soul. The outer copper altar represents our struggle to bring our body closer to God. The golden altar represents our calling to realign our soul with the Rebbeinu Shalayla. Thus, on the outer altar, they used to sacrifice animals, beasts, representing the beastly, bodily, coarse, material part of the person, which craves indulgence, which craves gluttony, which is addicted to self-preservation and self-gratification which sees its ego at the, as the center of the universe and the satisfaction of its pleasures and comforts as the epicenter of life. And one really needs to take the bull by its horns, as we discussed in previous weeks, challenge it, sacrifice it, refine it, educate it, and direct it. Yet the inner altar was used for something else. They weren't sacrificing animals. They were rather burning incense. In other words... This was a service that was much more refined, much more subtle. Where the animal food or the grain offerings could then be eaten, Ktoiris can't be eaten. It rather created an aroma which speaks to a deeper part of the human psyche. Or to quote the Gemara, smell, aroma, something that the Neshama enjoys more than the body enjoys. In other words, it affects a much deeper dimension of the human being. This is what Ktoiris represented. It wasn't the base, beastly struggle with the beastliness of a person to sacrifice it to God. Our confrontation with our bodies and our animals day in and day out. Rather, this was the avoid of cultivating the soul, of opening the soul up to its own deeper potentials, to its own greatest heights, 
to allow the soul to experience dveikus, to experience intimacy with its creator. He's not sacrificing his body and his animal to God. He's rather developing his sensitivity to reach, to aroma, to fragrance. Something much more subtle, aesthetical, refined, sublime, sensual. Reach also from the word ruchnius. Reach, smell, and ruchnius, spirit, are very much connected. This is not the confrontation with the physical, crass, and brute dimension of the person, but rather our calling to reveal and explore the untold depths of our own soul, of our own spiritual essence. Hence, the difference in the very words. Karbanais versus Ktairis. Karbanais comes from the word Kiruv, close, Karov. The Sefer Habayr, one of the earliest Kabbalistic works, writes, Karbanais is through that, that through which we become closer to Hashem. Ktairis in Aramaic, the word Katar means Kesher. A knot, a bond. In other words, through Ktairis, man or woman not only became close, Karayv, but also Katar, Mekushar, became one, connected, bound up in a seamless whole with Hashem. And that is why Yom Kippur, what was the primary Avoidah? What was the focal point of the service of the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur? It was the Ketiris. It was burning the incense in the Holy of Holies. Because Yom Kippur is that one day a year when the Jew is empowered to experience his or her deepest oneness with Hashem. And therefore it's manifested not so much in the service of sacrificing of animals, although that also had a significant place on Yom Kippur, but rather the celebration, the uniqueness of Yom Kippur, revolved around the special Avedis Haktoiris, the Kain Gadol going into the Holy of Holies and burning the incense and the smoke going up. Because Haktoiris represents, as the Klayakar says, the Avaida with the Neshama. Now, if I can give a metaphor to describe these two dimensions that exist in our relationship with Hashem, let's use a metaphor from relationships between human beings. Relationships between friends, relationships between parents and children, between teachers and students, between colleagues, partners, and of course, the relationship between the husband and the wife. There are two elements in a relationship. One can be called the outer altar and one can be called the inner altar. Every relationship for it to be successful demands, requires sacrifice. You need a mizbeach. A relationship is being on an altar. It requires commitment, surrender, transcending myself and connecting my life to somebody else. But there are two phases. One phase in a relationship is where the person must constantly confront and challenge his ego, his ambitions, his um, desires, his cravings for the sake of the other person. Practically speaking, you may not be in the mood of behaving like a mensch. You may not be in the mood of speaking like a mensch. You may not be in the mood of helping the other person and giving them what they need. But you know what? You make a sacrifice. You take the behemoth in you. You take the beast in you and you sacrifice it for the sake of the relationship. That's one phase in a relationship, a great phase. But it pales in comparison to the kteris of a relationship. The kteris of a relationship is you're not challenging your animal and sacrificing it, but rather together you're creating a beautiful aroma. This is... The true romance when a relationship, when both parties in a relationship sense the ecstasy, the beauty, the reach, the beautiful odor that is generated in their home, in their life, in the ambiance of their families as a result of their relationship. This is not only a relationship with body, it's also a relationship with soul. It's not just a challenge, but it's also a celebration. It's not just a skafya, but it's also a shapcha, which means it's not just the person is subjugating himself or herself, knowing that this is the right thing to do, but rather they truly sense the delight, the beauty, the depth, the extraordinary reach, aroma that is generated through a relationship. It's a much higher and more beautiful level in a relationship. There are times when we are stuck in Mizbeach HaChitzay, and there are times when we manage to elevate ourselves to the Mizbeach HaPnimi. Some people spend more time in this altar, and more time in this altar. The common denominator of both is, that you're committed to a relationship. You're committed to connect to another person. According to this introduction, we will understand the deeper spiritual meaning,
of the argument between Abba Shaul and the Chachamim. Each morning they used to clean out the menorah, Hatavas Haneris. Yes, there are opinions in Halacha, what is the definition of Hatavas Haneris? We are choosing here this evening the opinion, the prevalent opinion, that it meant cleaning out the menorah from the residue. There were the ashes, there was the dirt, there was the oil, there was the wick that wasn't consumed, and you had to clean it out in order to prepare the menorah for a fresh, new kindling. This is called Hatava Saneris. What does it represent spiritually? The Pasik says, Neir Hashem Nishmas Adam. The soul of a human being is a flame of God. The flame of God, that is the soul of a human being. But in order for us to kindle that flame, in order for us to kindle that soul, we first have to clean out our candelabra. We first have to clean out the manure, the vessel in which we place the wick, and we kindle the flame when there's a wick with oil. What does that mean, spiritually speaking? It means you can't light up your soul. You can't light up your flame. Nei Hashem Nishmas Adam. The flame of God is our soul. If the body of the person is filled with dirt, is filled with filth. So you need a tavas haneris, you need to clean it out so it should be conducive to be able to put an oil, to be able to put in a wick, to be able to kindle a flame. Or as the Chayva Salavava is the great Musa Sefer of Rabbeinu B'chayi ibn Pekuda writes, Kishem shala yishkinu amayim va'eish b'kliyechad kach la yishkinu taivis avas Hashem va'avas elam haza b'levechad. I'm paraphrasing, just as fire and water cannot coexist in one vessel, the love to Elam Hazza, the love to materialism and the love to God cannot coexist in one heart. The person can be filled with coarseness and yet have their soul burning. One has to challenge themselves, one has to clean themselves out, what they think about, how they speak, how they act, what they eat, what they don't eat, what they look at, what they don't look at, how they spend their days and how they spend their nights. You have to clean out your life from the dirt in order to be able to kindle the flame and have the neshama burn. And here we have two opinions. According to the Chachamim, even in the midst of cleaning out the menorah, you are empowered to burn incense. Even while the person is in the midst of cleaning out the filth, cleaning out the residue, cleaning out that which could not be consumed in the flame of his or her soul, even in that confrontation and that moment, the person is capable to interrupt that. And in the middle of that, stop and burn incense, meaning he has the ability or she has the ability to feel the geschmack, the beauty, the sweetness of Avedis Hashem, of serving Hashem. According to Abba Shol, that's not the case. There are two separate stages. There is cleaning the lamps. Yes, you interrupt the cleaning of the lamps. But what are you interrupted for? Not for Ketoyeris. For Dam HaTamit. For slaughtering a lamb and taking the blood of the animal and sprinkling it on the altar. When you finish cleaning the lamp completely, then you can graduate and evolve to the next level, which is Ketoyeris, which comes only after Hatavas Haneris. Zakdi Rebbe, this is also connected to his very name. Abba Shol. Abba Shol means a borrowed father. What an explanation. Abba Shol, a borrowed father. You know there's a word concerning Pesach. I think the word is from the Rebbe Rebbe Elimelech of Lezhensk, if I'm not mistaken. By the Seder, before the Manishtan and the Haggadah, what does it say? Kan Moizgin Kaisheni, we pour a second cup of wine. The Kan Haben Shoyel. And here the son, the child asks, Manishtana Alayla Zemikal Alaylas. But Shoyel doesn't only mean ask in Hebrew. Shoyel also means borrows, like a Shoyel, a borrower. The Kan Haben Shoyel, here this child borrows. So it says in Polish Svarim and Polish Chassid is this. There are people who have fathers, physically, mentally, emotionally. But there are people who don't have fathers. They may have lost their father at a young age. They may have lost their father or their mother at a later time in their life, but they don't have parents. And then there are people who may have physical parents. 
but they never receive the nurture, the love that a child ought to receive from parents. We live today in a world where often there is so much dysfunction in families that parents abandon their responsibilities of giving their children what children need to grow up, men to grow up like healthy, self-confident, moral human beings. So it comes a point in the Seder when you want to experience freedom, part of experiencing freedom is that you turn to your father and you ask all the questions that you have, but this person doesn't have a father. So Kana Ben Shoyal the Haggad says at this moment you can borrow a father, which means at this moment there's a special energy that the Rabbi Shalom gives every Jew, through which you can experience all the nurture and the love and the confidence and the depth and the strength that you would have and could have received from a father, this is the moment you can borrow that koyach, you can borrow everything that a father can give to a child, this is the moment of kana ben shayel, to ask your questions and experience your freedom. But in this sikha of Parshish Tetzavah, the Rebbe used this idea on Abba Shaul, a borrowed father. Sometimes there's a Jew who feels that his father is with him, at every moment of the day, in his space, in his life. And sometimes there's a Jew who's in the level of Abba Shaul, which means he has to borrow the father, so to speak, from somewhere else. He doesn't feel like he has a father. What does this represent? Spiritually, it represents a Jew who doesn't feel that intimacy, who doesn't feel that relationship of love, of passion, with Avinu Sheba Shemayim, with his father in heaven, and he needs to borrow his father. So according to the Chachamim, according to the sages, even in the midst of cleaning up your lamps, you have the power and therefore you're obligated to stop and go burn the incense. According to Abba Shoal, he can't. Abba Shoal says, it's a borrowed father and I'm in Atavas Haneris, I'm incapable of experiencing the delight, the ecstasy of Avedis Hashem. This is the argument. So according to the Chachamim, you clean five lamps. And then you do the k'toris in the cleaning of the lambs. The Chachamim are representing a much deeper, a much higher level in Avedis Hashem, where even if the person has to clean up certain aspects of his or her life, nonetheless, they can feel, they can sense in that very experience the element of k'toris, the mizbeach apnimi, the cultivation and the revelation of their soul. And then you do the last two lambs. As the Samach Tzedek says in Eratayr, in the memorium of Hanukkah, the la- uh, as the Samach Tzedek says in the Atayr, I'm sorry, in this week's Parsha, Parsha Tetzavah, each of the seven lamps represents one of the seven Midois. The last two are Yisoyed and Malchus. Yisoyed is masculinity, Malchus is femininity. So after you do the Ketoyeres, then you can have the real last two lamps, the connection, the intimacy between Yisoyed and Malchus. Abba Shaul has to borrow a father. Abaye have a say that Amarach and Meshmei the Gemara of Aliba the Abba Shaul. Why was Abaya named Abaya? His real name was Nachmeni. The Seder Adairis says Abaya had a tragic life. Abaya's father passed away before he was born. Shortly after he was born, his mother passed away. And hence they nicknamed him Abaya, as the acronym of a Pasuk in Aisheya. Asher Becha Yerucham Yasin. In you, God, will an orphan find love and compassion. In you, God, will an orphan find hope. Abaye, Aleph, Beis, Yud, Yud. Aleph, Beis, Yud, Yud. Asher, Becha, Yerucham, Yasein. So Abaye represents the model of Abba Shoal, of a borrowed father. Spiritually speaking, this is a Jew who's orphaned spiritually, which means he does not feel a relationship with his father. He's in a relationship where there's no k'toyeres, there's only karbonos. Back to the marriage metaphor. Sometimes the relationship has a passion and a vibrancy and a flowing love and romance to it. Sometimes the relationship is always requiring sacrifice. I have to sacrifice my ego and sacrifice my beast. 
The same is true in the spiritual relationship between the Jew and Hashem, between the Chassin and the Kala. Sometimes he feels his father right there and he loves every moment of it. And sometimes it's Asher Becha, Yerucham Yasin. He feels like an orphan. He doesn't have an active, intimate relationship with his father. His father is distant, aloof, sublime, at least from his perception. Abba Shoal, he says, I need to borrow a father. I need an Abba. I don't see my Abba. Comes the Beis Yosef and tells us L'cha'ira, we should follow the halacha of the Rambam, the halacha of the Smag, like the Chachamim. Which is that in the middle of cleaning out our lamps, we are empowered to be able to offer K'tairis. So the Beis Yosef says no. Why? Because Matsu O'elam, to quote the Beis Yosef, the world discovered that Abayah did it according to Abba Shoal. He believed Allah is like Abba Shoal and therefore they did not want to change it. So the Rebbe, using the words of the Beis Yosef and explaining them on a spiritual level, says like this, Matsu O'elam, the world found O'elam. We know the word O'elam comes from the word Helam, the etymology of the word O'elam, world, is Helam, which means concealment. Matsu O'elam means Helam at Gefunen. Concealment discovered that Abaye believes like Abba Shoal. This represents, in other words, the state when a person is in concealment. When a person is in exile, Banim Shagalum al Shulchan Aviyam, children who are exiled from the table of their father, as the Gemara says in Brachis Dav Gimel. So they are on a level of a Yasim, an orphan, the level of Abaya, Asher Bechayurucham Yasim, and therefore they follow the perspective of Abashol where they have to borrow a father. Elsewhere, Matsu Oilam, when you're dealing with an Oilam, when you're dealing with a state of concealment, they cannot put burn Ktairis in the middle of Atavas Aneris. They're incapable. When you're in a state of concealment, there's no inspiration, there's no light, there's no luminescence, there's no brightness. You're a state of exile, mental exile, spiritual exile. Then the Avoidim must be like Abba Shoal. You don't feel your father, you may feel like an orphan, and still. You continue cleaning the menorah, you continue breaking your nature and serving Hashem, you continue creating a daily relationship with the Creator of the world, knowing that this is the truth, knowing that deep down lurks within you a soul that is craving a father, that is craving a relationship. But you're not in the state where you can fully feel it, so you don't fall prey to your external instincts and addictions and cravings, and you fight for your Avedis Hashem. This is the paradigm of Abba Shaul. This is all year. Come see Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is another Mitzvah. Yom Kippur is a different reality. On Yom Kippur, Allah chachamim. On Yom Kippur, everybody says, "Lefanim yikaneis lahitiv chamesh neidis lahaktik teidis abayker ulehitiv eshtei neidis anisharis." On Yom Kippur, the Jew has the ability. Every Jew has the ability. Where the Allah should be like the chachamim in his life. So that even in his daily interaction with the filth and dirt of his nature or of the world around him, he could connect, he can experience the Ktairis, he can experience the intimacy with the Rebbein Shalom, he can experience the full majesty and aroma and fragrance of the relationship with his God. This is Yom Kippur. But all year around, Abaya have a Masada say that Amarachim Mishmei the Gemara va'aliba da abashol, and this we say before we begin davening every day. Why? Because this is a great source of comfort and a great source of inspiration. You wake up in the morning, and you look at yourself, and you feel that you're not connected. You feel that you're uninterested. You may feel that you're not in the mood, you're alienated. You're not a spiritual person, you're not a soulful person. So before we start davening, we tell you, you should know, Abaya have a Masada Seder Amarach. Abaya Asher Becha Yerucham Yasim. Used to organize the Marach Alibad Abba Shol. Yes, you may say you're on the level, you're like an Abba Shol in the case. That you have to borrow a father, you don't see a father, you don't feel a father. Who are you speaking to in davening? But yet, Abba Shaul also built and organized and taught that there's a Seder Amarocha, that there's a way through which each and every day you can connect the truth. And that is, you can offer every day the blood of the Karbantamata Hashem, 
You can clean out every day the lamps of your menorah, even though you don't feel k'tairas. And here we see an interesting phenomenon in halacha. There are two Mishnas in Shas. One Mishnah follows the opinion of Abishol. One Mishnah follows the opinion of the Chachamim. One Mishnah says, First you finish with the lamps and then you do k'tairis. That's one Mishnah. That's a Mishnah in Mesech Tetomit. Vav Mishnah Aleph Gimel. Now there's another Mishnah in Mesech Tetomit. Mesech Tetomit. Perek Aleph Mishnah Beis and then Perek Gimel Mishnah Dalet. We have the opinion of the Chachamim. Maktiris aktiris and metivis aneris, nichnis la aktiktiris or shachar, ule etivis aneris. Ktiris comes before atavis aneris, like we know the opinion of the Chachamim was, you did five, then you did ktiris, and then you finished atavis aneris. So one Mishnah embraces Abashal, one Mishnah embraces the Chachamim. The Gemara in Yuma says it's not a contradiction, because the two Mishnahs were authored by different authors. One believed in Abashal, one believed in the Chachamim, but the Rebbe says, look where these Mishnahs are. The Mishnah that follows the Chachamim is a Masech Yuma. The Mishnah that follows Abishol is a Masech Tamid. What's the difference? Yuma means the day in Aramaic. Yom HaKippur. Masech Yuma is dedicated to Yom Kippur. What does Tamid mean? Tamid means always, perpetually, consistent. In Masech Yuma, when you're in the level of Yom HaKippur, the holiest day of the year, Achaz Bashana, when the soul of every Jew is revealed and manifested, Halacha like Chachamim. That Mishnah in Yuma follows the Chachamim. In the middle of Atavah Saneris you have Ketiris. The Jew can experience the depth of his soul and have it permeate in all aspects of his life. All aspects of his life. In Masech Tamid, in the daily perpetual a hustling and bustling of life, in the pressure and stress of Tamid, of every single day, here the Allah is like Abishol. The Jew may be on the level of Abba Shol, may consider himself that the Abba is borrowed, and nonetheless, Abba Yavim is Sadr, say that Amar Rachim is made the Gemara of Alibad Abba Shol, that each morning, he or she can wake up in the morning and build a powerful and authentic relationship with Hashem, through cleaning out their Menorah, through being makr of the Dama Tamid, through continuing to clean out the Menorah, although at that moment there is no Ketoris, but ultimately even they, following all this, they will also reach the Ketoris, where they will feel on a deeper level how their soul is celebrating intimacy with Hashem. Have a wonderful evening.